Um, let's talk a little about exact timing. I, and I, I, I know what you're going to say about this, but I, I just want you to say it again because we get questions about why aren't we modeling exact timing and, and what about oscillatory, oscillatory dynamics in the cell and why don't we care about that? Um, maybe you can. Uh, those are two separate questions. Yes, I know. <laughs> timing is not the same as oscillatory uh, dynamics or, or you know theta waves and beta waves and alpha mm -hmm. waves and things like that. Let's just talk about timing. Okay. All right. It's clear that you have to have timing. Right. Uh, so if I'm going to my speech right now, it requires that I produce a set of mo mo motions or movements or muscle musculature contractions. Very specific. Very specific right. timing. Right. I am able to speed it up and I'm able to slow it down, right? Right. So there's a lot that happens going there. So any behavior has to have timing, and inference often has to have timing too, right? Obviously, I'm listening to speech, I need to, I have to well, incorporate playing time. a sport, the yeah. timing's really important. So uh, I have long had a theory about where the timing is occurring and how it's occurring. Um, that, and I even wrote about this on intelligence, we've talked about other times. Um, I'm just gonna briefly mention it. Uh, I believe, and this is a hypothesis, it's not proven, that um, that it's, stem, it's originating, timing signals are originating in part of the thalamus called the matrix cells, mm -hmm. which is not the same cells we were talking about earlier, that they broadcast over a broad region of cortex specific to a particular modality. So auditory will get a set of cells in the matrix cells in the thalamus will broadcast over the auditory region, another one will broadcast over the visual region and so on. And I believe, and there's now evidence, and I speculated this many years ago, there's no evidence that those matrix cells actually produce a timing-like signal, a cascade of activations, which would allow um, those regions to get a timing signal. Okay. And that would occur on the apical dendrites of those cells, so this timing signal appears in the layer one of the cells in layer three and layer five. Uh, the apical dendrites go up there. Yeah. And so the, the essentially the, the cells, the layer three cells and the layer five cells would have access to this timing signal. And um, in the case of layer temporal memory, it would be the layer three cells and layer three B. Mm -hmm. um, and that we could walk through in detail how this timing signal would work, where the sequence memory would now not just go to the next element, but go to the next element at the correct interval of time from the previous element. I see. Now, right. is this a, a driving signal or is this a biasing signal? It's a biasing signal. signal. It, it essentially says, I know when to expect the next input, but it doesn't. It would be a, a, a biasing signal in terms of inference. It would be a driving signal in terms of, it would be part of a driving signal in terms of behavior. Sure. Okay, so. We want you to become predictive, but not quite yet. Right? It's not I just want to have this behavior at this time. I want to say the next behavior at, is occurring at this time. So I need, it's, it's kind of a biasing, but it, you need, a, it, it's like saying I need to know the next element in the sequence and I need to know the time. And when I have them together, I can generate the behavior. Okay, but this is not something that we're, theorizing about at this point. Well, if we're theorizing about it, but we haven't implemented an HTM. Yeah. Um, I keep track of this. I was just at Cosine a couple weeks ago. I was talking to a woman who's an expert on these matrix cells in the thalamus. I was yeah. grilling her about this. And I ran by her this hypothesis. She thinks it's probably right. There's all this evidence suggests this is probably what's going on. We don't model that today because we don't, it seems easy to do and we don't have a need for it. Um, if I were working on a, a machine learning problem that required specific timing, I'd have to implement something like this. Yeah. At the moment, we don't have to. We don't have a problem that requires it. It doesn't seem to be the challenge. It's not a big challenge for me. It's, it almost seems simple at this point. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to spend time on it and implement it. For, I, I have other big fish to fry. Right. Or catch, or whatever the right term is. <laughs> um, so, uh, I, you know, that's the way it is. Um, I have a hypothesis on it. We've talked about it. I think that there's been increasing evidence that the hypothesis might be right. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't modeled it specifically. We don't have a need to do it right at the moment. Um, it would be an interesting project if someone wanted to do it. Someone could do that. A uh, community member could add a specific timing. Um, I can even give them some suggestions on what the timing signal would look like. We know some things about that. Okay, well, if you're interested, then you know where the form is. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, um, now, the other thing, oscillations. Sorry, yeah. yeah, so the brain is filled with all these oscillations. And um, some people study them, and they're fascinating, and they tend to be associated with different states of awareness and attention. And these sleep. oscillations are oscillations of cell activation. Yeah, they're sort of groups of cells that are sort of synchronized in their, yeah. roughly synchronized in their firing patterns, roughly. Okay. So if I look at all the spikes that have been generated by some set of cells between two regions, I might see them that are they're more aligned on certain weight frequencies. Like they tend to be spiking on certain peaks. Oh, I see. I see. Right. So yeah, it's like yeah. that's what they mean by it. Individual yeah. cells of these spikes coming out, yeah. and sometimes it looks like they're somewhat coordinated. All right. 
So it's not like we're randomly occurring. They're kind of occurring on waves of peaks of things like that. That makes sense. That's what the oscillations mean. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, our basic belief at the moment, and um, it's just an hypothesis, is that these oscillations are essential for neural tissue to operate, but they're not essential from an information processing point of view. Oh, so it's a biological byproduct. Yes. Uh, one of the, the, the basic cores of HGM theory is that um, the, the cells, the neurons, create these, what is called NMDA spikes in the dendrites. Yeah. And um, by the way, there's a really nice article that um, came out recently talking about how these, surprisingly, of these NMDA spikes are occurring everywhere all the time, which we predicted, of course. Um, and, um, um, but anyway, um, one of our hypotheses is that these NMDA spikes are, uh, are a key critical processing element for how the brain works. And an NMDA spike is generated when a, a, the synapses on a particular dendrite, a small section of dendrite, mm -hmm. become, get input at the same time, near each other in space and near each other in time. Mm -hmm. If you spread them out too far apart, they say this one comes active and then another one 10 milliseconds later, another 10 milliseconds later, another 10 milliseconds, it doesn't work. Right. They right. got to also have come in. So it's within, related to timing. Well, they, they all have to arrive sort of simultaneously within a few milliseconds of each other. Right. So let's say that's all nature could come up with, okay? So how is it going to make sure that these spikes tend to arrive at the same time? One way to do that is just sort of put an oscillatory background on the whole thing uh, to say, say, well, this makes everybody sort of firing. So when I want to detect a set of cells firing, I need to arrive at the same time. I'm really just detecting a set that they're active at the same time, but I need them to arrive at the same time. Oh, yeah, because they're not just going to be constantly active. If there's no, a, there's a spike and there's a lay and a spike and there's a lay. So the, you're saying that the, the, oh, the the oscillatory stuff could just be a mechanism that nature used to make sure that it could... Yeah, it's, it's a plumbing problem. It's right. like, you know, in the hardware, I might add a capacitor to, to solve some problem, you know. Here. It's, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't help the computer compute better. It just sure. it makes sure the signals arrive at the same time. So it's something so, we, don't, we don't really need to worry about. We don't, have to, we don't have to model it. It could be very important in terms of uh, neural diseases and, okay. you know, psychiatric problems, things like that. But in terms of information processing, we do not have a hypothesis or reason to add oscillations. Um, we just haven't found a need to do so, so I'm not going to just add them willy-nilly. We also have reason to believe that it is a plumbing issue, mm -hmm. um, and so we're just going to leave it at that until we have evidence otherwise. Okay. Makes sense to me. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, we're, we're kind of... Getting, is there anything else that you want to talk about the detail about the about this theory that we haven't? No, I think on? I think uh, the real thing we need to do is we we are in the process of writing a manuscript uh, to be submitted for publication. Right. And um, we need to get that done. Yeah. Uh, and that's the thing. The next thing people should read. Uh, I think over time we'll have a series of papers on this. Mm -hmm. um, this is a big idea, and um, it's really a, I think it should be a very important idea in brain theory. Um, and so um, uh, we need to get that out there, and we need to have it start being critiqued, um, and um, you know, getting pushed back on what's right or what's wrong about it. But the next thing that someone will really be able to get out of this will be a paper. Right. We'll post we'll we'll post it on probably by our archive before it gets uh, accepted for publication. So hopefully that won't be very long from now, and uh, and then people can really read it and the code and look at it in detail. Um, uh, so. Uh, that would be the next thing. Okay.